let us study another type of the antenna that is horn antenna so the horn antenna acts as a feed element for large radio astronomy communication dishes and satellite tracking and it is considered as aperture antenna because it is having a large area it can be considered as a wave guide with hollow pipe of different cross sections which is flared or tapered into a larger openings it can be considered as a wave guide with a hollow pipe of different cross sections which is flared or tapered at a larger opening what it indicate that basically this horn antenna is considered as a wave guides where at one end so you have a large openings or it is tapered or flared at the large openings it causes properly shaped gradual transition which provides proper impedance matching because at the one end this horn antenna dimension is gradually changing so because of this gradual change in the dimension it provides the proper impedance matching then as the edges are flared out the diffraction at the edges reduces and it causes the improved directivity i mean to say as the edges are flared out therefore the diffraction at the edges reduces which causes the improvement in the directivity let us study the horn antenna horn antenna is basically a wave guide so this is the wave guides the e plane and the h plane are shown and this wave guides can be changed or converted into a horn antenna by flaring one side of the wave guides now so this rectangular wave guides is converted into a horn antenna as shown in this particular figures 
Now, the horn antennas are basically classified into a two types. One is a rectangular horn antenna, another one is circular horn antenna. Rectangular horn antennas are constructed by rectangular type of the waveguides, and circular horn antennas are constructed by circular waveguides. And the rectangular horn antennas are fed with uh, rectangular waveguides, and circular horn antennas are fed with circular waveguides. And then, depending upon the direction of the flaring, how that uh, particular flaring is done, so these horn antennas are classified as sectorial horn antennas and pyramidal horn antennas. Flaring of the waveguides means. What are the one uh, side of the waveguide is there? So that particular side will be expanded in both horizontal direction and in the vertical directions. That is, the aperture of the waveguides is increased. Now let us consider the rec one rectangular waveguide. What uh, I shown here. So what are this particular one side of this particular waveguide is there? So this side will be expanded. Either in the horizontal direction or in the vertical directions. So this side of the waveguide, if it is flared in the horizontal direction, so then the waveguide looks like this. And the same waveguide, if it is flared in the vertical direction, so then it is looking like this. Then, if this, if the one side of the waveguide is flared in the horizontal direction, so then it is called as edge plane sectorial horn antenna. And if it is flared in the vertical direction, so then it is called as a E-plane sectorial horn antenna. That is, this particular waveguide will be flared in the vertical directions. That is, is expanded in the vertical directions. Then it is called as E-plane sectorial horn. And the same horn antenna, if it is flared in the horizontal direction, so then it is called as a H-plane horn antennas. Such antennas are called as sectorial horn antennas. Now. Coming to the pyramidal type of the horn antennas, in the pyramidal type of the horn antennas, one side of this particular horn will be flared, so both in horizontal direction and in the vertical direction. So then, so the waveguide is looking like a horn, so then it is called as a pyramidal horn antenna, where it is flared in the horizontal direction and also flared in the vertical directions. And for the pyramidal horn antennas are there, so this flaring can be in a uh, straight manner or it can be in a gradual. It is exponentially flared, so that is you can like look here. It is exponentially flared, then it is called as exponentially uh, pyramidal horn antenna.
Now, let us study the circular horn antennas. To construct a circular horn antenna, one side of the circular waveguides is flared and this flaring is shown in this particular figures. And so this is the E plane and this is the H plane. Now the circular horn antennas are classified into two types. One is a canonical form and the other one is a biconical forms. So the canonical form or the circular form is shown in this. In this particular figure, one end of the circular waveguides is flared and whenever it is flared, it looks like an horn where the mouth of this particular horn is in the circular pattern. Whereas in the second uh, figure, so the flaring is done in exponential manners. If you closely observe here, so here, so the flaring is done in the exponential manners. So therefore, it is called as a exponential flaring and it is called as a straight flaring. And in the biconical uh, uh, forms, so the antenna looks like this. In the straightforward biconical forms, so the antenna is looking like this. And in the exponential uh, form, so the antenna so looks like this. And such type of horn antennas are called as a biconical horn antennas.
let us study the design equations for an horn antenna. In order to understand the concept, a rectangular type of the waveguide is considered here. And this is a rectangular waveguides. And one end of this particular waveguide is flared. And the various parameters where it has been flared is shown in this particular figures. And this particular figure shows the E-plane view. Now from the geometry of this one, cos of theta by 2 is equal to, because this whole angle is theta, but we are countering only half of this particular angle. So therefore, cos of theta by 2 is equal to P divided by P plus delta. So that is, cos of theta by 2 is equal to P divided by P plus delta, quality as equation number 1. Similarly, you can calculate tan of theta by 2. So tan of theta by 2 is equal to A divided by 2 divided by P. So this you can write it as A divided by 2 P, quality as equation number 2. Hence, we can write from the equation number 1, theta equal to 2 cos inverse of P divided by P plus delta. And similarly from the equation 2, theta is equal to tan inverse of A divided by 2 delta. That is, so this angle theta can be calculated from this equation or it can be calculated from this equation. Then from the right angle triangle OBA, P plus delta that is P plus delta is equal to P square plus, P square plus A by 2 whole square under root. That is you can calculate this length is equal to root of P square plus A by 2 whole square. So this is from the hypotenuse theorem. Therefore, you can expand this in the A plus B whole square form then P square plus 2P delta plus delta square is equal to P square plus A square by 4. And as this delta value is fractional and very small, square of that value is going to be once again very small. So therefore, in this equation, so neglecting the delta value, then you can write it as 2P delta is equal to A square by 4 because this P square and P square will go and delta value is going to be very small, it is neglecting, then 2p delta is equal to a square by 4. Therefore, p is equal to a square by 8 delta. Then, equation number 3 and equation number 4 are called as design equation of the horn antenna. Now, so let us consider optimum horn. Horn should be very long with a small flare angle. That is, length of the horn should be as large as possible with a small flare angle. If this is the case is there, so then the beam width should be uh, very small and the directivity is very large. And if the flare angle is very large, then the directivity is very small. The second case is that for practical convenience, horn should be short. Theoretically, we are saying that Horn should be as long as possible, but practical cases consider the horn should be as small as possible. Now, we have to design an horn antenna between these conditions. Between these two extreme conditions, it is possible to design a horn antenna which has a minimum beam width for a given length. And we should design an antenna such that your beam width should be as small as possible so that the directivity is, should be high. And also, it should be free of the side lobes. Such horns are called as optimum horn or optimum flare horns.
Now, for a constant length P, when the aperture A and the flare angle theta both increases, then the directive increases and the beam width decreases. And if A and theta both increases to a large value such that delta becomes equivalent to 180 degrees. That is, if A and theta both are increased to a large value, then the value of delta becomes 180 degree. Then the field at the edges of the aperture and the field at the axis of the antenna are in phase opposition. Then for very large flare angles, P divided by P plus delta becomes nearly equal to unity and the effect of delta on the field magnitude needs to be neglected. So that is for very large flare angle, that is when the values of the theta is very large, then the ratio P divided by P plus delta becomes nearly unity and the effect of delta on the field magnitude needs to be neglected. Then when delta becomes equal to 180 degree, then the directivity decreases and the side lobe increases because of the phase reversal of the field. Hence, there is an optimum dimension of delta such that for a larger flare angle, the directivity is maximum, such optimum value is called as delta 0. Hence, we can write delta 0 equal to p divided by cos of theta by 2 minus p and this delta 0 will give the optimum value of delta and p is equal to delta 0 cos of theta by 2 divided by 1 minus cos of theta by 2. So it is going to give the optimum length. With these values, if you design a horn antenna, so then it will give the maximum directivity and the minimum side lobes.
for optimum flare harm the half power beam width can be approximated as theta h is equal to 67 degree into lambda divided by h and theta e is equal to 57 degree into lambda divided by ae assuming no loss and the directivity the effective aperture of an antenna is d is equal to 4 pi ae divided by lambda square so this is equal to 4 pi epsilon ap into ap divided by lambda square where ae is the effective aperture and ap is the physical ap aperture and epsilon ap is equal to ae divided by ap so this is equal to aperture efficiency now for rectangular horn antenna ap is equal to ae into ah where ae is the e plane aperture and h is h plane apertures and if you assume both ae ah and lambda to be 1 then aperture efficiency becomes equal to 0.6 then the directivity of rectangular horn is d is equal to 4 pi into 0.6 into ap divided by lambda square this is equal to 7.5 ap divided by lambda squares that is the multiplication of these two will give the values of 7.5 then we can express the directivity in decibels directivity in decibel equal to 10 log 10 of 7.5 ap divided by lambda square similarly for the canonical horn antenna that is circular uh, antennas ap is calculated from the equation that is ap is equal to pi r square where r is the radius of the apertures and it is measured in meters